So taking a look at task number four, this is the indirect or informal assessment component. We just talked through the direct formal and what that will look like. Um, same thing for the timeline. We want to have this done by the 26th. It's even better if we can work through this process sooner. Obviously, it's good to work ahead. Um, but when it comes to that progress check that I've been referencing due on the 26th, this will be a part of that too. So if you are working with a student in person, this is the time to get going with interviews for parents or guardians, if you can, uh, the student, if that's a possibility, teachers and other relevant service providers, anybody who's got relevant input regarding the case. Again, go to the FBA forms and modules. If you click modules on the left-hand side in the Canvas shell, scroll all the way down, you'll find some form options for parent guardian interviews, teacher interviews. You can add or adjust to these, or if you have another useful resource that you'd like to tap into for the interviewing, that's fine. There's a lot of good stuff online, um, just as long as you're gathering the information that's necessary for this indirect assessment part of the assignment. So um, conducting a file review is a great option here. If you can get your hands on the most recent reevaluation um, or the most recent IEP for the child or both, that is good information to summarize. Attendance records and grades are also valuable here. And this is just kind of the present levels component. Uh, how are we doing? What's going on in school? And the reason that grades and attendance can be good to look at is because while they obviously don't tell the full story by themselves, they are data points that can help us to understand how well the child is accessing. Um, so that's for what's going on in person. If you're using a case study, you'll go through and notice that for any of the four students provided to you, there are interview documents, some more than others, and IEP information. So you can look for a most recent copy, something like that will be uploaded to you in that file under modules in Canvas, and you're gonna be writing up and summarizing these resources separately. So that's what we need to do for the indirect task number four. This again is all part of part one, and that's why we're going through part one, just breaking it down step by step, because it is, you know, there are a lot of different tasks involved. So scrolling down, we're looking at task number five. This is the collection of the baseline data. This is also something that we need to have in place as a part of your progress check. Um, baseline data, you know, we've identified a measurement system. Obviously, it's referenced at the top of this document. We want to do that ASAP because we have roughly 20, 19 days left to gather our baseline data. So once we've figured out the target behavior, figured out the measure that we're going to be using, um, it's time to cover at least five data points, five days worth of baseline data. So let's say, just for a simple example, again, we're talking about frequency. Let's say that behavior is striking or hitting. Um, if that behavior is recorded based on frequency, and that we're just going with the same example referenced earlier, then the behavior frequency could be recorded on five different days. So let's say that I am working through, you know, uh, if I have the child for a period of time on a Monday, a Wednesday, and a Friday, next week I might try for Tuesday or Thursday, um, gathering at least five days worth of data. And then through those days, I'm gonna find out how many times did the child strike or hit. And obviously it's valuable to know when and where that happened, and that's part of the ABC, which is kind of that deeper level formal assessment. Um, that direct but with the baseline data it's more about that measurement tool referenced early in this document which would be frequency duration things of that nature so this is something that we are graphing and we can do that using excel there are detailed instructions about how to graph behavioral data in excel in our canvas shell uh, there's also a YouTube video linked in this document that you can check out that might be helpful for guidance for the use of Excel. Some of us are really familiar with Excel, others of us may not be, um, so it's just a good resource. And again, for timeline, this is going to be due as a part, these five data points for baseline, as a part of the progress check due on 626. Um, that's just 
roughly 20 we got 19 days until that happens so we need at least five days so again you could theoretically start with this as late as like monday the 20th but your life will be easier if you start it sooner so you're encouraged to do that again um, even if you do see the student or the child that you're working with five days a week we never know if a student might be absent or something might be going on that could impact, you know, maybe you're absent, could affect your ability to collect the data. So start as soon as you're able and you're going to be recording this without intervention. That's important. So this is our baseline. So don't start with any targeted intervention. Don't start anything based on a hypothesis of function. That's for later. Right now we just really need to know how often or for how long or whatever measurement tool you're using is this behavior of concern occurring in the setting when no special intervention is being tried so once you get that you'll be graphing it again there's a video linked here that might be helpful for you and for the case study this is where it gets a little tricky so there's a lot of information provided to you in the case study files um, it really depends on what target behavior you select because there are examples given to you in this document, but some of the data you might see might be referencing other target behaviors. Um, and again, the data presented, you know, what sets we might have or what types of data or how much is a little different for each case study. So what I'll say here is this is where the creativity comes in. If you're having trouble identifying which data set might be relevant or you feel like you need more, you can create your data and fabricate it um, for what you think, you know, based on the information given to you, make an educated guess of what you would see as a baseline. And you'll graph that for at least five days of baseline data collection. Okay, so this is where it becomes, you know, a little bit easy to do a case study and that you can sit down with Excel and uh, create, you know, five different baseline data points. And that'll be the frequency or the duration or whatever measurement tools you're using for your target behavior. Again, that's in Microsoft Excel. Now for task number six, this is the hypothesis. So we want to have a strong hypothesis about the function of the behavior. And this will allow us, it's you know laying the groundwork for us to create a strong intervention. And that's your behavior intervention plan, which is the whole main idea of this course. So we need to identify a hypothesis for the function of the behavior by June 30th. Um, you know, if you're running behind, please do get in touch with me because it's ideal that as soon as we have all of this information collected, you'll be really diving into the information that you've gathered from record review as well as from the MAS. And, you know, the more voices, the better for interviews. Um, you've got your ABC, that's a really valuable tool. So you're going through everything that you've collected. And um, I have a note here, right, uh, for the in-person part. So there may be many different function ideas or hypotheses that could be considered relevant. And this is where behavior gets complicated because somebody might argue, oh, there's um, attention seeking as well as work avoidance, as well as um, this or that function option. You know, maybe the child is trying to escape an unpreferred task or setting. And in reality, it could be the case that many of those things are impactful for the child, but we need to select a primary function. So really pull together your data, evaluate all of it, and identify what's coming up most often here. What is the primary function of the behavior, the target behavior that I have chosen? So if I'm learning about a different target behavior and I think the function might be different, just really try to shut that out of your mind. Look at the target behavior. Are we working? is the child working to escape and avoid or to gain something and oftentimes gaining would be attention um, and that's you know definitely a function that can be for a behavior the child might want to escape a non-preferred setting or task so we just need to pick one of these okay um, when you've identified one function you can then create an intervention that is based upon instruction for a functionally equivalent replacement behavior an example of this is if we identify that the child's primary function of the target behavior is escape and avoidance of non-preferred academic tasks we then would want to create an intervention that would give the child the opportunity to ultimately still earn the escape 
in a pro-social and adaptive manner that's going to be constructive and safe and appropriate for the school environment. And so that goes into the intervention part, which will be evidence-based, and it's referenced a lot in your papers for parts two and three. Um, but, you know, if I'm teaching the child, for instance, who has this escape behavior trying to avoid the non-preferred academic task through providing the child with a break system and a break card that can be appropriately utilized in the classroom to communicate with a teacher, that can be a functionally equivalent replacement behavior that can still allow the child a controlled and a productive break uh, without the behavior of concern occurring. So again, the emphasis in this section is to identify one function. Same thing for the case study. One function, please. And this will be largely based on the information that you've gathered and, um, you know, going through the various documents with MAS, interviews, um, just as referred to for the in-person work, ABC data is valuable here. One primary function, and we're going to go from there. So right after we have this hypothesis, we really need to select an intervention that is based on that hypothesis. I just gave the example of the break card system for appropriate and pro-social communication with teachers and ultimately earning time away from that non-preferred task. For instance, completing four problems and then not having to do the fifth one. Just throwing out some ideas here. Um, so at this point, we've got the intervention. This needs to be evidence-based, so you'll need sources that you can cite in APA format to support your selection. And last but not least, we move into data collection. So we'll really want to begin implementing our intervention. So teach that functionally equivalent replacement behavior to the child. You know, provide uh, the reinforcements or whatever evidence-based strategy you've identified. And you want to start that no later than July 11th if you are working with a child in person, ending no later than the 31st, obviously. Um, you know, we're nearing the end of the course at that time. So we need, uh, if you are in person, at least three weeks worth of data collected with the intervention in place. So you're back to that same measurement you identified in part two. Let's say that we've got the hitting behavior and we're using frequency. And let's say that we taught the child a different way to communicate wants and needs. And that was our intervention. And now we are collecting data over a period of at least three weeks. And we need to use that same measurement tool that we were using before. So this is data then that we would be graphing. And for a case study, you're going to develop intervention data. Um, again, you know, we're just, we wanna hope it's, it's a case study. We wanna hope that the intervention has been effective. So how can you develop data points graphed in Microsoft Excel? that will show that things are working. What kind of improvement do you need to see or decrease in frequency, duration, for example, of the target behavior? So that is what we need to do for a case study. And this is the gist of it for the document. Part one is really what we needed to talk through. Parts two and three are both papers. You're summarizing, reflecting on your learning process. It's essential that you include references and the prompts are really clear about what's needed for part two and three to support your selection of your intervention. So when you choose what you're gonna be teaching the child and you know why is it evidence-based, this is the part where you can really defend your choice. And that would be with academic journal articles, resources provided to you within this course and any other reliable and valid sources that you wanna include. Uh, part two is going to be requiring crisis plan and competing behavior pathway. There will be information in the course shell, obviously, that will help you to work through all of this, but I did link two resources for you that I think could be helpful for development of the crisis plan and for the competing behavior pathway, which will be integrated in part two. So one big long word document, I know it feels like a lot, but my hope is that this timeline document and video have been helpful for you to stay on track. Um, if you've started already and you don't feel like what you're doing is in alignment with what's outlined here, you can get in touch with me. But um, it's a pretty flexible process as long as we're hitting on these main points and staying on track timeline wise. I think that everybody's gonna do a great job. So have a wonderful week and I hope that this was helpful.